they wanted us to do something and we kind of went, you know, we can't do this. And we talked to them and got them to understand that you cannot have four strong black women with two buffoonish black men. It gets crazy when you find out that his reaction was even much calmer than that of his co-star, John said. Oh, I, I talked all kind of stuff. I, you know, I was just mad. It, it was just, um, it was us. It, it was, it was like our idea, you know. And while the men on the show had these understandable issues, the women also had their own share of challenges as well. There's no other nice way to put it. Many of the people who had come before me, they were larger women. I didn't fit that. I know I didn't. I didn't think they knew what to do with me. Six friends, all spunky 20-somethings, are living together in a vibrant city facing relationship drama, job struggles, and wacky hijinks. But no matter what happens, their bond remains strong. Any guesses on the sitcom's name? Here's a hint, it's not friends. It's the hit show Living Single. John goes to Satan's helpers. <laughs> but be warned, Satan knows me big. <laughs> These days, sitcoms are all the rage, particularly the ones that ruled the entertainment industry back in the day, because let's just face it, they just don't make them like they used to. And besides that, these shows weren't just great when they aired, have remained times through the decades. I know a couple of shows besides Living Single might have come to your mind right now, but you might be surprised that most of the other shows you thought of more than likely drew their inspiration from Living Single. The show, which debuted in the late 90s, was one of the few to create a pathway for even more popular shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and much later, Big Bang Theory. That's right, Living Single was ruling the scene when these shows were either just beginning to scratch the surface or their writers had just picked up the typewriters to get to work. Thus, there's almost no way you didn't see it if you were a big television lover in the 90s, but getting this level of notoriety didn't come without some hard work. The thing that stood out about Living Single to even people who didn't like it because of their personal prejudice was that the show was far from conventional. It was written in such a way that allowed young people to be more open about their life choices, in addition to breaking some deeply rooted stereotypes about black people. I mean, who would have thought a show about a group of young people living in this same building would be a foundational part of revolutionizing the entertainment industry forever? Even after 30 years, clips from the show still rule trend on social media from time to time. Most recently, the final scene of the series finale trended on TikTok with almost 3 million views when fans discovered that Khadija whispered an additional line after her actual line. Clips of the title sequence and theme song continue to make the rounds online, as does the quartet of women breaking out into song in the bathroom, using brushes and toilet bowl cleaners as microphones. If not full clips, there are of course also gifs of Regine posted whenever someone is acting bougie or some of Sinclair, whenever someone is whimsically innocent, traits those characters are known for. Living Single has become a classic sitcom, and Bowser said that's just how the circle of love works. Living Single, created by Yvette Lee Bowser, premiered on Fox in 1993 and featured an all-black cast of roommates living in Brooklyn, New York. It was an immediate and unexpected hit, according to Entertainment Weekly in 1994. I know you already heard me talk about the image the show presented of black people, but that part really cannot be overemphasized. To put that into proper context, all the jobs of the characters on the show include stockbroker, attorney, and magazine editor, as opposed to the representation of people of color in those days. Positive representation of black people was central to the show, and the cast was cognizant of the power their portrayals held. In an interview with Blavity Inc., Erica Alexander noted the importance of representation, saying, Representation matters. There are people who have come up to me who are in positions of power, whether they are politicians or lawyers that saw Max and Kyle and Khadija, and saw themselves in those positions. However, this is not to say it didn't have its own set of on and offset challenges. And to their credit, they tweaked it. An idea of what the show was going to be, but then when they saw us together, when they saw how we interacted with each other, then things started to shift. The characters themselves were, however, down to earth and had fun on the show. While they gave major consideration to racial issues, they weren't exactly bombarded with the stereotypical struggles that regularly overtake the lives of black characters on television to the point where it became their personalities. Know what I mean? Instead, they accurately represent black people and their communities. We had a brother who was wearing his hair in with locks working on Wall Street and a woman who was starting her own magazine. It was really powerful and I think it still stands today. Kim Coles said in an interview with Entertainment Tonight. 
Outside of the show's groundbreaking level of representation, the show is simply very fun to watch. The episodes are filled with wacky hijinks, with plot lines surrounding escorting a princess or battling to break a news story before another publication. It kept audiences enthralled and did so well. Living Single became so successful that after a year, NBC used the same formula of sitcom featuring Friends in New York City and aired Friends in 1994, although that was followed with its own set of controversies. But it was just too similar. It was, it was six of us, in, uh, six black folks in New York City versus six white folks in New York City. And they'll say, oh, that was the most creative show in the world, and they don't give us that kind of love. And I, that but this didn't actually affect the chemistry of the show's characters. We're still true blue, tight like glue, Yvette Lee Bowser, the show's creator tells Today.com comma using words included in the theme song. It's not just a title, it's a spirit, it's a thing. For us, it's not just a moment, it's a movement. It's an energy that we carry with us as a group, which is really beautiful, she says. They have a group chat in which they all talk pretty frequently, she adds. The show starred Queen Latifah, Kim Coles, Erica Alexander, T.C. Carson, John Henton, and Kim Fields as Khadija, Sinclair, Maxine, Kyle, Overton and Regine, respectively. They lived in Brooklyn as working professionals navigating the roller coaster of their young adult lives, lives that were filled with ups and downs both on and off screen. For example, if you paid attention during the earliest days of the show, and even for a significant part of her subsequent appearances, Queen Latifah was always wearing a necklace with a key pendant on it. May have looked like a fashion statement, but that was from a place of deep pain for the actress. The key was for a motorcycle she had purchased for her brother, who had unfortunately passed in a fatal accident with the two-wheeled vehicle. While she kept those details to herself for a long time, she finally spoke about it in an episode of Untold Stories of Hip Hop. I was supposed to be with him that day on the motorcycle, the rap mogul added, but one of our friends had to move, so we were moving all day. After my brother passed away, that ruined my world, rocked me to my core. I've never been the same since. Before playing the role of a successful magazine founder in NYC, Queen Latifah was known for her musical talent. Latifah's career began in the early 90s with her album All Hail the Queen, which featured her hit single Ladies First. In 93, the same year she landed Living Single, Latifah also earned a Grammy for her single Unity. She landed her first leading film role in the critically acclaimed Set It Off, 1996, alongside Jada Pinkett Smith and Vivica A. Fox. She became even more of a household name in 2002 after her iconic performance in Chicago, for which she earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Since then, Latifah has created her own daytime talk show, The Queen Latifah Show, earned an Emmy for Outstanding Television Movie for the film Bessie, in which she portrayed blues performer Bessie Smith, starred in films like Girls Trip and Hustle, and held lead roles on the Fox musical drama star and the CBS crime series reboot of The Equalizer. Unlike Queen Latifah, who was set to have a role in the show right from the beginning, Kim Coles only became a cast member because of some last-minute changes. Of course, this is not to say she didn't fit into the role perfectly, as we can't think of anyone else who could have played a better Sinclair. However, the role was initially reserved for Simone Jackson, or as more people might know her, Moni Love. Seeing as she was Queen Latifah's best friend at the time, it's easy to see where that connection stems from. For unstated reasons, Jackson turned down the role, which led to it landing on Coles's lap, and boy did she eat that role up. That's in part because her common catchphrase, woo woo woo, didn't just catch on for people watching the show, it actually became a whole trend in the 90s, which in turn helped her cement her position in pop culture. In the early 90s, before landing her role as Queen Latifah's cousin on the show, Kim Coles found success as part of the original cast of the sketch comedy series In Living Color. Due to the popularity of the show, Coles landed the role of the hilarious Sinclair on Living Single, which cemented her legacy in pop culture. The actress went on to make appearances on shows like Six Feet Under and My Wife and Kids, and she had a recurring role on The Gina Davis Show in 2000 as Judy Owens. The actress was the host of BET's game show, Pay It Off, and part of TBS's comedy, Ten Items or Less. Coles continues acting and making guest star appearances on television, with some of them landing her major award nominations. 
As for her personal life, Kim Coles has been married twice. She first got married to Aiton Edwards from 1985 to 1995, and then her second marriage was with Reggie McIver. He was a former SWAT police officer in the Dominican Republic from 2015 to 2019. While it's obvious that the show wouldn't have had the same flavor without Sinclair, a lot of people also feel the same way about Maxine. As a high-profile attorney, you'd expect her to bring all the order to their already hilarious and chaotic arrangement, but this woman brought anything but that. What's more, this wasn't her first rodeo down that path. Erica Alexander, who plays the on-screen DA, first got her break when she portrayed Pam Tucker on The Cosby Show, a part which secured her ascent to fame as a 90s sitcom star. Concurring with her role as Cousin Pam was her role alongside Whoopi Goldberg in the 1990 film The Long Walk Home. After five years of playing Maxine on Living Single, the actress continued to work on TV, appearing in recurring parts on several shows and making guest appearances on Grey's Anatomy and Queen Sugar. She took on the role of Tess Shoemaker in Freeform's sci-fi drama Beyond. Alexander also played a role in the acclaimed film Get Out 2017 and starred in season two of Amazon Prime's Bosch. Besides her success in the spotlight, she's been working on her podcast, Finding Tamika, which is majorly based on the constant increase in the number of missing young African-American girls who she doesn't believe to be getting any help from the police. While most of her personal life has been out of the media, the star, when she's not working on her podcast, is reported to be working on releasing documentaries about prominent people in the black community. So you see, she's not just defending rights on screen, she's also doing it when the cameras aren't rolling. And then there are others who have been in front of cameras almost their entire lives. This is one of the few things that set Regine Hunter apart from the rest of the pack. Juana, Cole, won't you come in? Would you like some coffee? Well, we're out. I'll just Regina's real-world alter ego, Kim Fields, grew up under the spotlight. Her mother, Chip Fields, was a singer, actress, and TV director. Years before landing the role of socialite wannabe Regine Hunter, Fields gained fame as Dorothy Tootie Ramsey on The Facts of Life. Her role on the 80s coming-of-age sitcom launched her career. After Living Single was cancelled, Fields took on directing and has worked on a few of Tyler Perry's movies and BET's Let's Stay Together. In 2015, Fields joined the cast of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, although her gig only lasted one season. The actress dive into reality continued as she competed in season 22 of Dancing with the Stars in 2016, finishing in eighth place. Most recently, she starred alongside Mike Epps and Wanda Sykes on the Netflix comedy series The Upshaws. As I mentioned earlier, Regina's story differs from everybody else's, and Sinclair's on-screen boyfriend is the perfect representation of that contrast. Overton O.B. Wakefield, played by John Henton, happened to have risen to fame purely by chance. He was discovered in 1991 by a comedy executive for The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. After his set on the late-night talk show, Henton's career took off. Post-living single, the actor starred on ABC's The Hewleys with D.L. Hewley. In 2000, he was involved in a serious car accident that broke both of his legs and nine teeth and shattered one of his eye sockets. After extensive reconstructive plastic surgery, he continued his work on The Hewleys. Henton subsequently made a few other guest appearances in 2009 and 2014, but has intentionally seemed to stay away from television. These days, the only stages you can find Henton are comedy club stages where he's been doing stand-up professionally since he halted his television appearances. So far, it's clear how everyone from the show has had to deal with one major disaster or another while they were on the show. However, Terrence T.C. Carson might have had it the worst because his problems weren't only with the creators of the show, but they also followed him beyond living single. Before his role as the charming and successful Kyle Barker, Terrence T.C. Carson performed on stage in musicals like The Wiz and Dreamgirls. He crossed over into comedy when he starred in the film Live in Large. In 1991, and then came Living Single in 1993, which wasn't the easiest set for him. In a candid and revealing interview with Comedy Hype, T.C. Carson shared his experiences in the entertainment industry, shedding light on the challenges he faced after being let go from the show and the impact it had on his career. Carson mentioned that there was a pervasive rumor suggesting that he was difficult to work with and that he came to work unprepared. These accusations were, according to Carson, entirely untrue. He shared how this falsehood impacted his career, leading to a period of diminished opportunities and casting directors viewing him in a negative light. So I heard that you were difficult. I heard that you, you know, came to work unprepared. I said, you know what? This interview is over. Thank you so much for your time. And I just got up and walked out. 
The experience of being falsely accused was emotionally devastating for him, as it tarnished his reputation and hindered his chances of landing new roles. In any case, the interview with T.C. Carson raises important questions about the industry's treatment of black actors and the challenges they face in maintaining their careers. Carson's revelation about being blackballed is a stark reminder of the systemic biases that persist in the entertainment world. Bald. Um, there was a rumor going around that I was difficult to work with, mm. that I come to work unprepared. The tendency to stigmatize black actors and label them as difficult or uncooperative is an issue that has been raised by other prominent black figures in the industry as well. Carson's story highlights the importance of addressing these biases and promoting diversity and inclusivity in the industry. It serves as a call to action for industry leaders to challenge preconceptions and create opportunities for talented actors irrespective of their race or background. Carson's interview also touched on the impact of false accusations on an actor's career and personal well-being. Being wrongly labeled as difficult or unprepared can have lasting consequences on an actor's reputation and opportunities. In the competitive world of entertainment, perception often shapes reality, and unfounded rumors can hinder an actor's ability to secure meaningful roles. One of the most poignant aspects of T.C. Carson's interview is his admission that he faced a significant struggle to redeem his career after the fallout from living single. The blackballing he experienced led to a period of limited opportunities and roles that didn't align with his artistic aspirations. Carson's journey reflects the difficulties that many black actors encounter when navigating an industry that often fails to provide them with the recognition and opportunities they deserve. Furthermore, apart from the industry's blackballing of TC following his tenure on Living Single, there have been allegations that Hollywood appropriated the show's entire concept and fashioned an all-white cast version of it. In fact, some who worked on Living Single have voiced skepticism about the originality of Friends, with Queen Latifah doubting it publicly during a 2017 appearance on Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live. It was one of those things where it was a guy called Warren Littlefield that used to run NBC, and they asked him when all the new shows came out, they said, if there's any show you could have, which one would it be? And he said, Living Single. And then he created Friends, she said. Possible concept theft aside, this wasn't the only ugly experience Queen Latifah had with the show, even the executive team also strained her time on the show just as much. According to reports, the rapper come actor had a body shaming experience where higher ups told her to drop some pounds for an acting role in the 90s. I can remember specifically doing Living Single and the word came down that we needed to lose weight. Here we are, four different women, four different body types, and we needed to lose weight, Latifah recalled to Entertainment Tonight Thursday. While the actress was taken aback by the request, she remembered sticking up for herself and co-stars Kim Coles, Kim Fields, and Erica Alexander. If anything, it angered me and disheartened me, but it really angered me, she said. I said, we are what women look like. We're not going to lose weight for whoever's idea of what we're supposed to look like. To many people who loved the show while it was on, this was enough reason for the affected cast members to have jumped ship. Others believe the show meeting its abrupt end was tied to an entirely different issue. One of the people on these boats wrote, For me, writing Kyle out was what K the show, and the marriage is Sinclair and Overton. Seemed like they only brought Kyle back when Regine left. They cheated us out of Regine's fabulous wedding. Tell me, which of these factors do you really think was responsible for the show going sideways? I'll be in the comments. That's it for this video. Goodbye.